Good evening. I'm Susan Craighead with the League of Women Voters of Naperville. Tonight, we'll be talking about bikeability and walkability in Naperville. For many of us in Naperville, the ability to hop on our bike and step out of our homes and have quick access to ride or walk the neighborhoods and trails is an important aspect of our quality of life. And as we become increasingly concerned about gas powered vehicles, safe transportation alternatives look more attractive. But our trails and paths didn't come about by accident. Many of them exist because of extensive citizen involvement in the late 1990s. Their safety requires consistent attention. As electric bikes increase in popularity and as traffic becomes more intense, the need for planning and meeting community needs is growing. Tonight, Tom Craighead and Justin White, both with NESS, the Naperville Environment and Sustainability Task Force, will be talking about ongoing concerns. Justin and Tom? Just always finding the, the mute, unmute button. So <clears throat> my name is Tom Craighead and I am working with Justin White and many others in um, Naperville uh, environment and study. And uh, as soon as I get my screen, no, that's not it. Sorry, I wasn't quite ready, I guess. Okay, how's that? It's good. Okay, so um, Justin White and I and another number of people are working with NES, the Naperville Environment Sustainability Task Force. And for those of you that NES is a new acronym, uh, it's a group that's been working, it's all volunteer. And as the um, acronym says, it's all about sustainability, particularly uh, trying to get the city of Naperville as a whole to reduce greenhouse gases. And so it's a group that the city has committed to working with. Uh, this city council meeting almost two years ago, um, <clears throat> the council voted and various groups are working with uh, their counterparts at the city. So we're doing active transportation, walkability and bikeability, and we're working with the Transportation Engineering Development Department. Um, and again, our topic is on uh, walkability and bikeability. Justin, you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, sure, hello, I'm Justin White, and I work closely with Tom, and I'm a member of the community for several years now, and uh, very passionate about this topic we'll talk about today. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So it is our mission to improve uh, bikeability and walkability. And um, a lot of it is in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, the idea that you can ride your bike um, <clears throat> or go walking instead of hopping in a car. Um, but first of all, it has to be safe. And uh, a term I just learned uh, recently, the last couple of weeks is a vulnerable road user, which is the U.S. Department of Transportation, Illinois Department of Transportation definition for pedestrians, cyclists, uh, people on scooters, uh, anyone not in the car, as well as construction workers. So it doesn't matter how uh, pleasant and enjoyable and convenient it is. If you don't feel safe, that's a total stopper. Um, people just won't go out and ride or walk in areas that they don't feel safe. And also it's important to um, <clears throat> remember that safety is relative. Um, it just is very individual depending on your experience and um, a lot of other factors. But essentially, um, if you don't feel safe, you aren't safe. So walkability, bikeability is good to replace uh, vehicle trips, but it's all about safety being pleasant, enjoyable, and convenient. So one of the first things is just who are we talking about that bikes and walks? So uh, this is what you get if you Google uh, like bikers. 
I'd uh, like to point out that this family is not exactly practicing safe biking. Uh, first of all, dad doesn't believe that helmets come in dad sizes because he's not setting a good example by not wearing a helmet, as well as the uh, the family has managed to um, uh, scatter themselves all over the, the trail, which is not good either. But on the other hand, a lot of people are using bikes uh, to commute, and we'll be talking about e-bikes, especially as uh, making a, a lot more um feasible to, to commute. But there's another group of who bikes and walks um, <clears throat> that are, if you Google invisible cyclists, you'll get these images. And so the um, two on bicycles, uh, the, the men on bikes are stock images. The, um, the liberated Divi, it's a Divi that is a rental bike in downtown Chicago but it was liberated and made its way to Bolingbrook outside of Meyer. Um, and obviously it's being used in a different way than um, some of us elite riders. So just remembering about um, that there is more. So just going in on that just a little further is a transportation disadvantage is something you can map mostly using um, US census census tracks. So non-voluntary, no vehicle. Um, so active mobility, which can mean biking, walking, and of course, public, public transportation. But it's also going to mean poor walkability due to conditions and safety um, and long commute times, and then economic disadvantages in unsafe walking. So it's not just downtown Chicago, because this is a... Uh, uh, a map that you can get to. I will could certainly provide you with the coordinates of how to get there. Uh, but you'll recognize that probably um, DuPage County is other than I and I don't know why there is that big um, gap up in Warrenville, but DuPage County is pretty clean, as is most of Will. Uh, some of Bolingbrook, not so much. But then most notably is as you go right over the border from Will and from DuPage into Kane and Kendall, um, you're in transportation disadvantage. And this is something that <clears throat> we are considering because the scope of the work that we're asking the city to do is working on the bicycle plan, um, but also connecting with routes that go to our neighbors in all directions. Right now you can get uh, go a lot up into Wheaton and <clears throat> Glen Ellen, and you can go all the way to the Prairie Path and you can go under Interstate 88 and underneath the BNSF tracks, but not so much towards Aurora. So just kind of remembering that it isn't all about um, just recreational cycling or professional kind of commuters. So Justin, I'd like to hand it over to Justin to talk about e-bikes. Sure. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so one of the things we wanted to, to share with you is the, uh, the new and upcoming uh, phenomenon of e-bikes. Um, and we call it here at a game changer. Uh, right there, you'll see that there's two quotes. Uh, one's very interesting because it kind of reflects that, you know, we're not talking about uh, the more professional type A uh, cyclists. These are people, just regular people that ride their bike for various reasons. And uh, we found this quote uh, uh, online. Um, and then also then there's the one below there where there's people that are choosing to ride their bike or e-bike for, for reasons that are related to commuting. And, uh, but also uh, just looking to get somewhere and they, maybe they don't want to get sweaty. So I just wanted to convey that image there for you that the e-bikes are not, uh, they might reach out to a different target of people, but they also equalize to a certain degree. We do the next slide, Tom. So what is an e-bike? Um, it looks like a regular bike. Uh, you, sometimes you can't even tell. Um, so that one on the left, it looks very similar to a regular bike. It's just, you cruise around town. Um, you might see there right behind the uh, seat tube that there's kind of a, a, a smaller uh, darkish uh, device there. And that's actually the battery. 
So that's one of the indications. Now, not all bike e-bikes show the battery in that way. Um, they might have a down tube that actually is a little bit larger and has the battery inside of it. Uh, the one on the right is actually more of an up and coming type of e-bike, where it's very common in Europe, uh, but also becoming more so in certain urban areas in North America. Um, and you can notice there that it's basically turned into like a small SUV for families. So uh, if you're doing certain distances of, on trips, uh, you throw the kids on and, and head to the market. So um, it's, it's not just about, uh, it, it has a variety of purposes and, and uh, applications. Uh, one of the things I just wanted to convey is that there is different levels of pedal assist. So when you ride an e-bike, uh, there's different classes. Uh, don't want to bog you down necessarily with too much of the classes. Uh, but one idea there is that that a class one uh, is pedal assist. It helps you to ride your bike up to 20 miles per hour. Uh, if it's class two, you can have a throttle. Uh, gets you up to 20, uh, 20 as well uh, without having to pedal. And there's a class three. Class three is a pedal assist only, no throttle, but it can get you up to almost 30 miles per hour. Um, the range is about 25 to 100 miles, so without a charge. So and it can all go through a standard outlet. Um, and I think the, the, the thing that you might notice is if you ever try one out, um, you know, th there are Divi electric bikes or some from your local bike store. Um, some, uh, you definitely notice a difference uh, when you jump on one, even for the one that's the class one. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier. Uh, price ranges can go from around $800 uh, to almost 10,000. Uh, so it's a, a wide range of pricing. Um, and then as far as the, the last bullet point there is just that the Illinois state law, um, you cannot ride an e-bike on a sidewalk. So uh, in some communities, there are uh, police officers or some type of enforcement, um, others there are not, but just so you know, you can't ride an e-bike on a sidewalk. So just something to keep in mind. And also if you're under 16. Just tell me if you can go to the next one. So uh, for all of us here living in Naperville, uh, you might notice that this is a, a Little Pop's Pizza um, on the south side of town, and uh, they are here. Uh, so I'm not sure if in this picture here, Tom, but um, I believe in one of the other pictures, you notice that a lot of those bikes right there actually have it. That's that long, that's kind of big down tube that I was mentioning. So all these bikes over here actually are e-bikes. So you might not notice them, but now you might. So it's uh, it, they're out there and, and you might, they're riding along next to you. So the next slide. Uh, E-bikes is uh, are basically, you can see on the left that traditional bikes, non-electrified, um, it's primarily a male effort. Um, and this is a, a study about um, in North America. Uh, but when you move to the, to the right, where you see e-bikes, uh, you can see that the split evens out. Uh, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's kind of an equalizer. Um, so it's something that's allowing it more access to people that maybe have moved away from bikes at a certain point in their life. So if you can move on to the next one, Tom. Uh, so there's a variety of uses for e-bikes. Um, I think it's it's something where you'll notice that some people might be using it to go go out. Uh, they might use it for exercise, to visit family, do errands, or even commute. Um, one thing we just like to convey in this in this uh, in this table is that commuting obviously is is a very strong uh, aspect of e-bikes as well as exercise and recreation. So it allows you. Uh, uh, a chance to, uh, to do a variety of different things. So if you move to the next one, Tom. Uh, as far as ridership rates, uh, when you're people that are have a bike, maybe they rarely ride it. You can see that on the left. Uh, then there's some people that are a little bit more frequent, but as you move towards the right-hand side, you see those rates jump significantly uh, with e-bikes. So it turns in, it goes away from just being a casual uh, thing you do on a nice day, like today, um, and you move into more of a regular use. So 
what I, we don't really cover it in this presentation, but one of the things that uh, there's always studies on is like, do you get the same amount of exercise uh, from riding an e-bike? And, and they've learned through studies that actually you actually get more on an e-bike because you're riding more frequently. It just makes it a lot more easier, more fun. So we can move to the next one there, Tom. Oh, one more. Okay. Uh, so this just shows the progression of the sales of e-bikes uh, going from, uh, you can see there are just about two and a half million units in 2017. And then on the way up to 2021, the most recent studies, this is obviously during the height of COVID, uh, you can see that it's 6.4. So, and this trajectory doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Um, there happens to be right now a little bit of a slowdown um, after COVID from uh, regular bicycles, whereas e-bikes continue to grow uh, in usage and, uh, and, and purchase. Um, just to give you a little bit more of a local um, impact here, you see on the right, um, Naperville has about 25 retail stores uh, in or nearby that sell e-bikes. Uh, five sell only e-bikes, so they don't sell any other type of bike. Um, there are um, uh, almost every bicycle store has an e-bike that's in, in, it, in addition to its regular inventory. Um, and then about two to three years ago, it was a little bit more difficult to find an e-bike in a retail store. Um, and you could even find it in your local Walmart, Target, Dick's, Best Buy, and Costco. So it kind of just shows you that, uh, that e-bikes are here and here to stay. Uh, the upside of e-bikes, uh, as, as Tom mentioned earlier, that there's a there's obviously an environmental story to this where very low, almost no carbon footprint, um, just no hands down, even with the, the electricity that's used to charge it, it's a very mild amount and it's a pedal assist, um, but it also makes it very practical um, to do errands. Um, it expands the ridership further, faster, longer, um, and then gets you the chance to ride more and, and stay fit. So. Can move on to the next one, Tom. There we go. So, one the thing we wanted to bring up here, and this is the reason why we speak about it with Nest. Uh, one of the things that Tom and I are very passionate about is is just to bring awareness here to the infrastructure. So, these e some of these e bikes can go very fast. Uh, so, when kids ride their bikes just around the neighborhood or with adults, maybe five miles per hour. Uh, seniors, maybe about eleven miles per hour. Um, when you ride a road bike, you're riding on the DuPage River Trail, maybe 14, 15, 16, 18 miles per hour, or maybe even if you're a young 20 year old, uh, 22 miles per hour. Uh, but these e-bikes can go up to 28. So uh, if you're a little kid riding your bike, and it's five miles per hour and somebody zooms by on an e-bike, you will notice. So it's definitely a little bit more of a, you have to learn how to handle a little bit differently with the pedal bike than a pedal bike with the e-bike. Um, and, but you put on more miles. So it's, it's obviously, uh, it's something that also is bringing to the fore that just the, the importance of building the infrastructure to accommodate these newer transportation modes. So on this slide here, we want to just convey that um, you can see in the nineties that the United States uh, was in the middle, uh, as far as the number of accidents or actually deaths per, per million people. Um, you can see some countries at the very top, some are just coming out of the, uh, um, out of the Cold War, um, very difficult scenario there, uh, but then countries below where you see France and Japan. Uh, but as you transition through the years, uh, United States has stayed, has gone down a little bit, but it's kind of ticking up a little bit, whereas you see France and Japan continue to move down. So this, this is a, a very important uh, table or, or a graph just to show you that it's not necessarily getting any better for, for cyclists and, um, and basically roadway deaths in, in North America. So this is another new trend that we're uh, realizing in this world of uh, multi-use or multi-modality uh, transportation, using a variety of different means uh, on our roads or trails, paths, is that the vehicle size is increasing. And uh, this is a trend that doesn't seem to be abating. So 
something to be aware of. And, and this is, uh, we believe this is an average sized uh, uh, female uh, standing in front of a off, basically off the lot truck. Um, this is F250, uh, so it's not modified. So you can see that there's a visual uh, issue. Uh, we, and this is from, uh, this is a vehicle from Ford. So uh, larger vehicles require a different uh, look at transport, at least um, um, transportation, but I mean it's specifically the routes and uh, use of the roads. This, this particular graph shows that the road deaths in different types of transportation and, and how they uh, progressed over the years. So it's similar to the other one, um, but this is very specific to um, different modes of transportation. So you can see that uh, cars or passengers in cars uh, on the towards the towards the right end, lower end there with the in the most recent times in 2020, that it's decreased. So by vehicles becoming safer and it's safer for the passenger. Um, if you notice on the very top, that has become very dangerous for motorcyclists, uh, just continues to get worse. And in the middle, you can see also that there's definitely concerns for pedestrians and cyclists. There is a, there's a slight drop there for pedestrians. Um, hard to say if that's the result of less people. I'm not sure um, in that study, but as far as the cyclists, you can see that's upticking. So plus 17%, plus 19% on the pedestrians. So on the right, we just want to convey there that that uh, there is a, a group called the League of American Bicyclists, and they're very aware of what can be done to fix this. It's just that there's, there's a, at the moment, there's not a, a lot of momentum. And so there's people like myself and Tom that are trying to get the word out, especially in our local community. So if we could move on there, Tom. All right, Tom, hand it over to you. So one of the things that Justin and I have been doing is meeting with a lot of people who are now elected that we met with every single um, candidate for to be a council member, uh, plus uh, both Scott Worley and uh, Benny, Benny White, and all four of the um, of the people running for the park district, as well as we uh, have met with the president of the park district board, Mary Gibson, who has joined us tonight. Thank you, Mary. Um, so what we're asking, first of all, is because we went through these slides with them and got the idea across that we have to address safety. The other part is that, um, our bicycle master plan, if you go to the city website, was last updated in 2006. So it's 17 years old, and I know that's older than a lot of uh, some of our children and grandchildren. So it's really kind of, to me, it's not something to be proud of <clears throat> because a lot of the trails, most of the trails actually along the DuPage River trails, the one that goes across Knock Knowles were all done prior to that period when there was a very active citizens group that I was part of. Um, it was not only was the transportation advisory board tab was much more active, but also there was a bicycle pedestrian advisory committee that was extremely active. And there was a lot of good cooperation with the city of Naperville, the park district, the forest preserves and the counties because some of the um, uh, paths that we use, especially for example, along Hobson are actually in DuPage County. So there really was at that time, a lot of work. And again, these things, all of these paths came about because there were citizens who got involved. I, I really believe that <clears throat> it would have been much slower and not as extensive without citizens doing what Justin and I are doing once again. So um, the other ask is to really pay some attention to safety because um, looking at police reports for accidents with cyclists and pedestrians, 
half of the pedestrian accidents occur in the central business district. Obviously, you have a lot of car interactions with pedestrians, but that kind of bothers me that um, the city can't do a better job of protecting uh, people that are down there to shop and have a good time. Um, the other part is that half of the cyclist accidents happen where a um, trail, a multi-use trail, crosses a busy street, usually Washington, or um, in one case where Hob they're crossing Hobson, but it's right there with Washington, so a lot of the turning behavior. So <clears throat> a lot of what um, I really believe, and just from studying and having been uh, served on uh, TAB before, is that it's not just anything you can do with traffic engineering of a specific intersection. You can't necessarily enforce, write enough laws and enforce them enough. It really comes down to the behavior of cyclists looking out for themselves, and the same thing for walkers, and then drivers. Um, and so that's something, though, that is addressable by the city, that in talking with, um, even with the park district, um, let's do some safety rodeos with uh, different age groups, uh, not only the young children and their parents, but the middle people, and also the senior citizens. Because again, as Justin mentioned, uh, there's a lot people that are older that are hopping on an e-bike. Um, they can keep riding into their 70s and 80s. Uh, but just like AARP says, maybe you ought to pay attention to the way you drive as you age. Uh, same thing for, for cycling, especially if you haven't been on a cycle for decades and all of a sudden you're on one that just literally takes off like a rocket as soon as you touch it. So anyway, those are the major things that we're talking about with the city is update the plan, and again, plans that will connect with particularly Aurora, as well as another thing about the plan is that right now, there are almost no um, bike um, lanes in the city of Naperville. And when they are, they are just some paint. So if you're familiar with MODAF uh, between 75th and south towards um, uh, at least 87th. I, yeah, I think it stops at 87th. It's a nice little one and a half inch or so uh, stripe of paint, uh, nice white paint, and that's it. And it gives the uh, bike lane about uh, three feet. And if you talk again with the idea of it's uh, relative to safety, uh, my wife Susan is doesn't want to ride on that. That's not safe because uh, MODAF is going past at uh, 45, maybe 50 miles an hour. So as we're asking and forbidding the e-bikes to be on um, sidewalks, and we really want to get to a destination with an e-bike uh, to run errands or to commute, the city really needs to step up his game on uh, providing true protected bike lanes. Uh, Aurora recently announced that they are redoing their plan, and it's not even as old as ours, and they already do have some protected areas. So that there's a lot that the city needs to do, and we are getting good traction with a lot of the new and the old um, um, council people, as well as with our new mayor, uh, Scott Worley. So, <clears throat> So just a little more about, um, a little more detail beyond that. One of the things is that in um, Aurora's study, they are at the bronze level by a cycling group uh, for their essential bike facilities. We did that for a while back uh, again when it was more active and we got up to bronze, but then it was stopped. So right now, um, there is no agency that is uh, rating um, bicycling and walking in Naperville. And as we compare ourselves to some of our um, benchmark cities, uh, one that I always hear is Fort Collins. And 
Fort Collins uh, is just, they are really doing a great job of bicycling and we aren't. So I think that, and just in talking with some of the people that are business oriented, it's a business reason to pay more attention to walking and cycling. Uh, we're falling behind as a, a city that's livable in biking and walking. And that's becoming, in, of course, increasingly uh, popular. Um, also have the city council and TAB take more of a leadership position. Um, I would encourage you to go look at the TAB uh, Transportation Advisory Board on the city website. Um, they don't have very robust agendas, to say the least, and they cancel every other meeting, which is hard to understand because uh, traffic is a great concern, whether it's biking and walking, to anyone in Naperville. It's always one of the top one or two reasons or uh, concerns that people have. And um, Tab's just not leading the way anymore, and Ted's not working with them either. So um, <clears throat> again, asking Ted to update the implementation map, uh, continue working with Ness. The other thing that uh, Naperville seems to have kind of lost sight of, at least in biking, biking and walking, is really going after grants. Uh, Rockford did a, um, a great project in downtown with good bike lanes. Uh, out of a $13 million budget, um, the city is paying for three because they went after funding. Um, at one time, we were doing a lot of funding. The uh, uh, path that goes across Knock Knowles was uh, already engineered because we were working with the city as Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and Ted was uh, using a lot of foresight, and it was already engineered. It was shovel-ready. Uh, President Obama took office, released some funding, and uh, it got built uh, right away. Um, another thing that has really fallen off is collaboration with the park district, with uh, different counties, with the forest preserves. Um, and then finally, again, going back to really coordinate with our neighboring communities, especially with the idea that a lot of the people um, that are commuting may be more like invisible cyclists and they're riding right now in pretty threatening con traffic conditions and they're riding on bicycles that uh, we elite riders uh, just wouldn't even touch. So uh, just not forgetting that there are invisible um, riders also. So uh, quickly going through a few of these, one thing that uh, we're also doing is collaborating with the e-bike suppliers, that there are um, three that are working specifically just with e-bikes and others that are selling a lot of e-bikes. Their business has really gone over, like Spokes has gone from just having Spokes on Washington, South Washington has gone from being just uh, manual bikes. They have great selection of e-bikes and again safety and safety with doing transport <clears throat> with engineering of intersections and then also it still helps to have the police department really committed to cyclists and pedestrian safety because i've had experiences where um the police were not on the side of the cyclist they just saw it from the perspective of the cars so thank you, and um, I believe we have uh, plenty of time for Q and A. Um, I haven't really been monitoring chat, but um, we any... have we, we do have uh, one question in particular. Uh, can you discuss the absence of safe biking and bike paths in North Naperville? That's really a great question. And we spoke with, Justin and I spoke with uh, Councilman Patrick Kelly, who has recently been reelected, and he lives in a more historic area. And if you're on sort of to, towards North Central College, um, you're not bad while you're using Slate and Loomis but then you crossed Ogden and it's not easy to cross Ogden. And then the paths really kind of um, dwindle out. So that's an area. And again, the idea of a bike plan is to hold a lot of 
um, public open houses and workshops so that people can, uh, some of the techniques we've used before is have a big map of the city and then have people show where they live and show um, what destinations they'd like to get to, but they can't. And so um, I think that the areas that are underserved are North Naperville um, and really even getting straight up to, because even though it's not exactly Naperville, Worley and Yackley and College is not rideable. Um, there's no sidewalks uh, continuously. Um, you can take the DuPage River Trail, but that's about it. Um, so I believe that North Naperville is inadequately served. And then because a lot of the building uh, was done in the Southwest after the last time there was a bike map, um, that area is not really well served, though the park district has done a great job of keeping up like with Ashbury, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but the Ashbury that goes behind uh, Nequa and all. And you, and you can get to Aurora that way. But that's, that's something that we definitely need to do is have workshops and get a lot of input on where people want to go. Because what we did before is one of the first things we started with is what destinations people want to go to and then how do they get there. And so it's pretty reasonable to get to the Naperville downtown metro station, but not so much the um, 59, Route 59. Does that answer the question? Um, not really. I'm I'm Diane. I'm the one who asked it. Okay. And I'm I live in Saybrook, which is just north of Ogden, next to Washington. Mm -hmm. And I find that if I want to go up to Herrick Lake Forest Preserve, I must take the sidewalk that goes along Washington. Otherwise, yeah. I'll get run over. And even then, I still got hit by a car once coming back, mm -hmm. you know, crossing Iroquois because mm -hmm. the car just wasn't looking before it turned right. Mm -hmm. And then the going the other way, trying to meet up with those nice bike paths in the south part of town, I've got to ride through commuter hell because I'm usually riding in the evening, you know, mm -hmm. late afternoon, evening. And to try to ride through the area north of the train station and, and well, just anywhere around the train station, it's like um, in that area, I can't ride on the sidewalk because it is mm -hmm. city proper and there are pedestrians. And yet, you know, cars are just coming and going because people are zipping to the train station. So it's not till I get, you know, all the way down to Gartner that I start feeling like I'm safe. Yeah, I see your point because the Washington uh, <clears throat> was actually engineered to be a multi-use path as a broader sidewalk. Um, is that what you've noticed there, that it's wider? No it, is, no, it is not wider. And there's actually been some problems a few times. There's starting to be more pedestrians from the apartments at Washington and Warrenville. And when they're coming mm. over the bridge and I'm trying to go over, that's the standard mm. width um, sidewalk with absolutely no... no um, I mean, the other areas of the sidewalk have a little bit of parkway so I can swerve into the parkway or the pedestrians right. can pl politely step into the parkway. They do have the right of way. But, you know, going over the bridge, it's, it is a problem because there's just no mm -hmm. room to go. Yeah, because I think that one thing that <clears throat> also, even Washington further um, south into the city, the, as you said, there's no parkway and there's just like the curb. So you're also in danger because you're so close to moving traffic. I'll have to look because I thought that at least part of that area where it was a broader sidewalk. But again, um, another thing that we've gotten the city to agree to do is put up cameras and other ways of monitoring traffic because it's our contention that uh, even though uh, the director of TED said he didn't believe the paths were being used, um, that they're actually uh, the DuPage River Trail on nice um, weekend afternoons is saturated and maybe 
getting a little scary. So what I'd like to ask you to do, I'd be glad to um, even meet you and uh, look in more detail at what you're saying. And again, um, just any chance, uh, please do take the, um, um, there's a survey. Why and don't you the, paste that, that link back in, Tom? Okay, I'll do that again. <clears throat> so right now the city of Naperville at our um, behest, nudging, stronger than nudging, had at least agreed to do a survey and it does ask questions uh, where you will, you should be able to express uh, your concerns, Diane, about mm -hmm. not being safe because there's too much traffic. Uh, and I think the historic districts are a problem because the streets are narrow. Uh, and if you've got parking on even one side, even the cars are not that comfortable. So I think you've got some really valid concerns and um, I'd be glad to meet you. But then as we um, hopefully we'll get um, action requesting the update of the map um, after the new councilmen, council uh, people take office and a new mayor, that pretty soon after that, um, there will be actions put before council to, to work on this. And so um, just keep in touch and make sure that you can go there um, to these to the meetings, uh, to council meetings and be a public speaker. So does that help, Diane? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, there is no great answer really, other than uh, again, here's the place to go. It lands you on the city website where you'll see the biking maps and you'll see our 17-year-old uh, plan. And then uh, really above all of that, you'll see the information about taking the survey. And the survey is not limited to Naperville residents. It's for anyone who visits Naperville, uh, works in Naperville, because I think uh, many of us know um, a lot of people that work in Naperville cannot afford to live in Naperville. So if we encourage everyone to, um, to commute by bikes, we have to do something about that. So there's other a question. There's a question about the how the what is the master plan? Like what does that mean? Is it does is it for planning purposes? Is it just a description of what already exists? How is that map used? Okay, um, so this map, <clears throat> again, was created from almost nothing. And my predecessor in BPAC was uh, someone who was knocking on the doors uh, along Washington, where the veterinarian clinic is, and another private house, and encouraging them, getting their uh, consent, even though it was there were easements. So it really is something that was started out with, and if you look at the map, and maybe, uh, I don't know if Justin, you have, could go to that website there and look on, at the map and then share your screen. Um, because you'll see there um, that there were things that were already built, then there were things that were planned, and there was a priority of the planning. And so most of the things, uh, the routes on that have been built now. Um, so there's really nothing in the planning stage, but it was used at really starting with a much earlier version of very few um, on street or multi-use paths. And then as they got uh, first through workshops, uh, we would prioritize them and say, well, it's really logical we want something to go up and down the DuPage River Trail. And the park district was uh, really involved and committed and, and worked on it too. So now we can go up and down DuPage River Trail. But again, it's the idea of, of talking to people like Diane and saying, um, I don't feel safe in my neighborhood. I want to be able to get up to Herrick Lake and uh, right now, because that's kind of something like I know how to get there. Um, but I'm also, I'm not afraid of, of very much. I don't want to have very com good common sense when it comes to my own safety. Um, so I, I truly believe that just getting people to do that. So, okay, so thanks. Uh, Justin, can you see that? Do you want to walk us through or do you want me to do it? Oh, please go ahead, Tom. Okay, so if you could, um, 
this is the city of Naperville, basically, and there's an inset for the downtown. And if you look at the legend, um, there are some, and again, this is from 2006, which was quite a long time ago, that there was completed bicycle route and then proposed bikes, which were low, medium, and high. And then also because uh, some of this is park property, some of it is uh, park district, some of it is forest preserve. So this is, <clears throat> and again, some of the very high were ones that if you could just zoom in a bit on towards the top, please. Oh, which street? Okay, uh, just that's fine. That's not fine because it went black. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so this is some of what um, you know Diane was talking about. And so this is uh, Columbia Loomis. So if you keep going on Loomis, in theory, you can keep going and then get into Herrick Lake um, all the way across Loomis. But you are going through a lot of um, really just kind of side roads and some of them are, are cut throughs. So it's not always that great, but at least, and this is all on street. It's not protected multi-use paths, but at least it's something the city planned because they said, we want people to, to be able to get from essentially downtown. Um, you can go across the tracks and keep going. Um, so that was something because it was a, um, priority to be able to go. So uh, just going down a little further, if you would please, scrolling. Yeah, so a lot of the purple was lower, but it now has been pretty much. Um, so there is the one that if you go along here, you're on the road and that's the <clears throat> bike path or the bike lane that I talked about that is just really doesn't really help all that much. It's almost like not great. Uh, it almost kind of gives you a false sense of confidence. But you can go down there and then you can get into Springbrook Prairie. Um, if you keep going across on Bailey, um, you really have to go up to like 75th and then come back down. Though the park, uh, the forest preserve is talking about having a, um, a bike lane or a bike path on this side of Plainfield Naperville Road that'll go into this area here, which will make um, Springbrook Prairie more accessible. Because once you're into Springbrook Prairie, this is goes under, there's an underpass there. Um, so essentially that's just the way that we worked on it uh, was to look at where do we want to go. And again, most of these are on the road um, there are some that are going along um, Book Road now that are on a broader sidewalk. I think this one here is just a broader sidewalk, but it's um, really pretty close to the road. So um, so anyway, does that kind of give you a, a feel for uh, what the planning map looks like and something about the process of how it goes? Should be pointed out that there's no signage that says when it's okay to to ride on the sidewalk. I mean, I have to use my own judgment. I know that when we hit downtown, the sidewalks are forbidden, um, and you know, river walk is forbidden. But you know, I always feel like I'm I'm on, I might be get get arrested when I take the <laughs> sidewalk up Washington. No, because essentially. Um... The state law, the Illinois state law is that, except for e-bikes now, is that uh, bicycles may ride legally on any sidewalk unless the local authority has um, said no. And so you're absolutely right. The central business district, um, which does have some signage, uh, indicates that skateboards, bicycles, uh, scooters are not allowed on the sidewalk. But any other time, you're well within your rights. And I certainly have, because another issue is uh, for me to get from my home, I can take side roads up towards uh, 75th and Naper Boulevard, where the um, Mariano's big uh, jewel store and everything are. But the last half a block or so, 
I have to ride on the sidewalk because that's the only way you can get there. Yeah. So. So that brings up another comment that we have had from someone. It seems that recreation was the uh, destination of many of the routes that we just looked at, not shopping or schools. And then another question was, if you are riding your bike to go shopping, let's assume you can figure out how to get to the shopping. Is there a place to lock your bike or leave your bike? Great so questions. Think, yeah. That's great. Was that you, Kath? I think it was, it was Kath. Anyway. It was yes, Kath. thanks. Yeah, thanks, Kath. Kath is also a member of um, NEST and works on public transportation. So she's very dedicated to doing this. Um, you're really right that at the time, um, and again, I think e-bikes is going to change that, is that it was mostly to, um, to recreation, to go to a park, to go to the forest preserves, uh, with the exception of being able to get to the metro stations. Um, but again, that was what... Um, when we would hold these workshops that were open to the public and do different things like, again, just like putting up uh, post-it notes, where do you want to go? What's important to you um, specifically? Um, it wasn't as much uh, going that. And then the other part of your question is, is a major concern, um, <clears throat> which if I understand, okay, I ride my bicycle um, especially my expensive e-bike to the train station or to even just uh, Jewel, um, is there a place where it's going to be safe? And the answer is kind of yes and no, because during this period of time, there was a city ordinance that required all new construction to provide for um, bike racks. Um, I have a real problem with the placement of a lot of the bike racks um, because, for example, um, the at um, Napier and Gardner, there's a new, relatively new Starbucks, and I think it's called the Brown Bag. That's a, a fish place and a couple of others. The racks are backed by the dumpsters. And so, first of all, can you even find them? You have to look pretty hard. But then I don't really want my bike locked up next to the dumpster because nobody's there. And one of the things that, in addition to your lock, that's a deterrent is traffic of um, people going past so that no one uh, hopefully has the temerity to pull out a huge bolt cutters and steal your bike. So um, there's a lot of things that I believe that the city simply hasn't done in thinking about um, cyclists and pedestrians, as well as any, because all of when we talk to Ted about concerns, Ted tells us what the standards are, the National Highway Safety Transportation Administration, and they're just all really focused on how do I get traffic going faster, including that monster truck, which again came off the assembly line that way. And people, most of the trucks that you see at once upon a time, a couple of decades ago, people would have to modify the truck to make it that big, but they come off the uh, assembly line that way. And that's people are driving them like that. So does that answer your questions, Kath? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the part about locking up your bike was someone else, but um, but yeah, it just, it just and it seems like looking at that map, we would want to hope that our next plan had like twice the density. If you really want to put these bike trails near people, so they'd be more encouraged to use them, you want to double the density of bike paths. Just looking at that map, there are so many gaping holes. Um. Well, hold that <laughs> thought. And when we, when we come to talking about it before council, um, you sign up and give your three minutes uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, witness statement. 
do we think we can really hope that they'll rip up roads and put in a a, a, a curbed uh, bike lane? It's an aspiration, but some places are. Um, yeah, and places again, it's, do it, but <laughs> yeah, because they are doing that in downtown Rockford. Um, and even Aurora has places like that. And I'm here to tell you that the Fort Collins does, and we always think that we're on a par with Fort Collins. So um, it's going to take a lot of work, and it's going to take a lot of um, just really keeping after because um, the city, meaning Ted, they're not going to do it, period, the end, unless citizens and elected officials um, pressure them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Kath is a big proponent of public transport and um which would really help a lot too. But uh that's a that's a struggle too. Yeah, well it's like we we have two types of roads right now. We have residential, twisty little things. Um, and we have the unofficial highways that run through town. And partially because um, our neighboring uh, suburbs are kind of landlocked too. They, they're trying to get to, uh, you know, the, to the highways and they have to go through Naperville and <laughs> yeah. or get into the train or, you know, uh, we need more public transfer to get the, we need to get the cars off the roads. Yep. To be. Any other questions, comments? Um, I think you will be able to get in touch with me by uh, talking to the League of Women Voters, as well as, uh, again, please, um, I think I can put it in one more time, the um, please uh, do the survey. Um, because the more voices we have, the more convinced that council and the mayor and Ted are going to be that people really do care, as um, so many of you have demonstrated tonight. And I want to thank you all um, for coming and listening tonight. And did you want, uh, to, did you want, to, put, did you want to put your email in the chat? Are sure. you willing to do that? If you're asking people to reach out to you. You can also find him through the league. I have a close connection with the speaker. So uh, I want to thank everybody who came tonight. It's an important reminder that when the public speaks, that's when we can make things happen. If you don't say what you want, nobody's going to know. Uh, our public officials can't always read our minds. Uh, so thank you everyone for coming in particular. Thank you, Tom and Justin. Uh, if you enjoyed this event and appreciate the committee, community and civic work of the League of Women Voters of Naperville, I hope you'll consider joining us. You can go to the join page of our website, lwvnaperville.org. We'll be posting this presentation on our YouTube page within a couple of days. And as Tom mentioned, please participate in the pedestrian and bike bicycle survey. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.